And here we go. How we doing, folks? How you guys doing out there? Happy Monday. I am back. Yes. Yes, I still got a pulse. Hey, what's up? So, back from E3, did all that fun stuff. And um, as I said, today's the day I finally pull the covers off and reveal the truth. <laughs> Not that I have been dragging out too long, but hey, you know what? Here, let's get the clock started. There you go. So I'm going to give you guys 10 minutes. If you guys chime in, give you a chance to try and guess who the character is before I actually spill the beans. But, um, yeah, so I'll give you the hints, right? I'll give you the hints in case you missed it before. And for anyone that stumbles along here, I'll probably repeat it. But, okay, so the character now is over 50 years old, all right? So this is the character in my video game. So the character is over 50 years old. Um, Sci-fi has managed to appear in five different TV shows and four movies. So for the big sci-fi fans out there, that should be a giveaway. But I'll let you guys try and take a stab at it. And no, it is not Nicolas Cage. <laughs> Pretty sure Nicolas Cage wasn't actually acting over 50 years ago. Uh, by the way, Nicolas Cage, his real name is Nicolas Coppola, right? You know that. He's he's a nephew of uh, Francis Ford Coppola. Not that that helped him in his career or anything. Not saying that at all, but... Um, anyways, so yeah, so as you guys remember, I pretty much shut down for a week. So I could uh, put the finishing touches on the demo that I wanted to present at E3. Uh, went off to LA, did that. Had a couple of meetings, and it, we'll, we'll have to see how that turns out. Not too sure yet, but um, let me see here. Yeah, so time will tell. Uh, good meetings. We'll, we'll see if anything comes out of them. If they don't, doesn't matter. We're going to proceed anyways. And now that I've been actually be talking about the game for real, yeah, we'll, we'll see if it starts to get any kind of traction. But um, yeah, we've got eight minutes left. So I'll tell you what, I'll show you anyone that's hanging around now or watching later. Uh, I'll show you a little my little E3 experience. Let me check this out. So minimize that. There you go. So, of course, I had to do the obligatory Nintendo picks, right? So me and my camera, my <laughs> my phone. Um, yeah. So uh, because I'm industry, I had the good fortune of going in early, right? And um, so on Tuesday, it was basically from 11 till 2 was industry and press only um still didn't change the fact that it was insanely crowded so even though it's supposed to be just that finite group there's a lot <laughs> so so unfortunately i really didn't get to play with too much of the stuff that i was hoping to i mean like uh i really wanted to give cyberpunk a try but that dude by the time i got up to cyberpunk the line was already like insanely long so unfortunately didn't really get my hands on that one but so here you go. So here's some Nintendo action there. There you go. This is Nintendo's display. Pretty nice stuff. But yeah, even though you see all this open space, but yeah, there's still lines. <laughs> there's still lines everywhere. Uh, yeah, this is Luigi's Mansion. They did this out right, man. Uh, I have no idea what it looks like inside. Unfortunately, didn't get in, but I mean, there you go. There's a nice little panoramic shot so you guys can get a better sense of that. So yeah, they, they had that really decked out big time. Let's see. This is the weirdest thing. Uh, Geico Gaming, <laughs> you know, people walk up and kind of go, Geico as in, wait, you mean like, like the insurance? And they go, yeah, yeah, Geico insurance. So, um, there you go. Kind of the weirdest, uh, <laughs> weirdest mix there. Uh, they were showing this game off. They had a partnership with these guys, Rocket Arena, which is just another, you know, uh, Overwatch style, you know, uh, capture the flag, battle rail kind of concept. So. That's the game they had set up there, um, but still, I'm not sure exactly <laughs> why, but, eh, you know, more power to them. There's the Cyberpunk. There you go. And basically, there's a, so there's a short line. I get excited because there's a short line here, and I'm waiting, right? And the best thing about the line is it's going along this wall, right? And the line's moving. It's like, hey, this is good. This is encouraging, right? And it comes up to a guy who's standing there, and he goes... Um, can I help you? And it's like, we, yeah, I'm, I'm in line. He goes, uh, no, actually, uh, the line's been capped. It's like three hours long, and I'm just here to tell people to go away. So I was waiting in line to get told, you're on in line. So, <laughs> if 
fun. So anyways, to anyone that actually made it in there and got to play it, congrats. Not me. Uh, it has some really nice cosplay, though. Check it out. Yeah, that's uh, some of the guys had decked out. Obviously, the girl in the middle is not in cosplay, but, you know, she she blends. <laughs> but, yeah, you can see the outfits, man. That's And then, of course, there's a main character, right? So, that was pretty slick. Some serious cosplay from those guys. Uh, there's Indiecade. I walked around there. Some pretty cool games that were there. Some uh, really unique things set up. So, that's cool. We got to see some of that stuff. Um, there you go. This might look familiar to some people. Yeah. Ah, little Borderlands action. Um, yeah. Once again, model, not part of the, the thing, just timing. So, I'm not sure who she was, but she posed well. So, there you go. So, there's some Borderlands action. Um, yeah, really colorful, right? <laughs> but, um, yeah, once again, didn't really get to play much. Uh, just watch some other people playing it. And they had this bizarre thing. They had, like, this... Uh, Kind of like one of those contests, right? Where they had people like, like, standing in these little pe uh, podiums, and they had like this giant pole that swung around. You had to try and dodge it, and it's just like people getting smacked around. So, kind of a funny thing. There you go. There's a nice little panoramic shot of Bethesda. They had a nice setup. They had Wolfenstein, um, Wolfenstein, uh, Wolfenstein uh, Rage 2, and a couple other games. Uh, they had the VR one, and I almost got in there. So, uh, yeah, there's a nice little close-up of Rage 2. Uh, of course, Commander Keen. Uh, I'm old enough that I played the crap out of the, the first Commander Keen when it was a uh, 2D side-scroller back in the day. So, yeah, I had to take a picture of that one. So, there's me. Yeah. <laughs> there's the VR Wolfenstein. Almost got in there. So, I waited in line for that one, too, and got up to the counter to get told that, oh, there's no availability today. We're already booked up. Okay. And she goes, unless you want to, you know, wait around you know, go standby. It's kind of like, well, for how long? She goes, well, the next one is at noon. I look at my watch and it's like five till noon. And it's going, I'll wait, right? Noon comes, people didn't show up. It's like, here we go, right? And then she goes, well, we're going to give them a few more minutes. Okay. Five minutes after noon comes and the woman is like, okay. And she starts to walk up to me to bring me in. And then the people show up right then. And they just kind of go, sorry. They had the reservation. So Mm, so close. Almost got to try it out, but not happening. But yeah, it was nice. Had uh, obviously they were using Vive Pros. There you go. I haven't done a bombing raid for you guys. Let me wake you guys up here. There you go. Oh, did I just that? I did, didn't I? Let me stretch that out a little bit. There it goes. So um, almost pulled that off, but not quite. Not quite. Um, Psychonauts. I got to go in there. That was pretty cool. I love the first game, man. I even bought t-shirts. The only thing I bought at E3 was a t-shirt for Psychonauts 2. The nice display. Um, check this out. I got to show you this real quick. Down to like two minutes left. No one's guessing. Everyone's quiet. You guys. I'll ask again. So, um, whoever wants to try and guess what the IP is. So, character. Been around for over 50 years now. Sorry. Nose is itching like crazy. Been around for over 50 years. Sci-fi uh, managed to get into five different TV series and four different movies, which that alone should be a giveaway, right? That should tell you because there's not that many that had that many different iterations of TV shows and um, movies. So that's what I consider a, a significant hint with a minute and a half left. Um, right, can I do this without doing full screen? Crap. All right, so you're only going to see part of that, so let me close out of that. Yeah, it's going to show you, but let's see. I don't know if I can... Properties. No, oh, well. So that was the room. Um, unfortunately, it likes to run full screen. That's my fault for not setting up the editor. So um, unless I can... Nah, I won't screw with it. But they had this cool room for... Uh, Psychonauts set up. It was pretty slick, right? They had, and then they did like a, a playthrough where they just sat there and, and uh, Tim Schafer actually stuck his head in for a second, so I got to see him. That was cool. No, didn't speak to him, of course, but yeah, he was there. But a uh, beautiful demo. It looks like a more of the same. If you like Psychonauts one, I think you're gonna like Psychonauts two, just with some really ramped up graphics, so looking prettier, but still very much in the same style. So there you go. Um, 
Come back in here. What else? Would, oh yeah, so the psychonauts. Um, close that out. There you go. Uh, destroy all humans. We got the two, so I just took a picture. I had a nice little setup they had there for the booth. Fortnite. You guys probably heard of that, right? They had a nice display. There you go. Check out the, the battle bus. They had like a life size battle bus. That was pretty pretty slick. And then uh, Avengers, the video game, I don't think it's getting too good of feedback, but yeah, I heard you. Yeah, I know. Stop. All right. Yeah, I heard you the first time. Go away. Dismiss. All right. So hide this bad boy since we're done with him. Yep. <laughs> Let me get that one out of the way too. Maybe. There he goes. All right. So, all right, I'll finish these slides up and then I'll do the big reveal to apparently no one. Either no one's here or everyone that is here is being really silent. I'm not sure which. I'm not sure which is worse, but all right. So, uh, yeah. And they also have these haptic feedbacks, right? So, like, we're trying to get closer to um, Ready Player One, I guess, right? So, you got like the vest and all that kind of stuff and, you know, their hands, feet, and that kind of stuff. Um, I, I guess it works off of just the sound card, and that's sort of like is what drives it, you know. But I didn't get a chance to try it out. There's actually three of them, so it's <laughs> different flavors of it. So these two were doing the same thing with audio, and then this one actually works off of hot and cold, which I don't think I would want to play like Doom. <laughs> you know, you know, you go into the sequences where you go down in hell, and I'm thinking that would get really uncomfortable really fast. But there you go. Let's see. And then they had one Battle Royale in VR. Why not, right? Got to do that. Why not? Handheld PC. That was pretty slick, actually. Um, I didn't get it hands-on, but I did look at it afterwards. The uh, the GPU is not as high-end as you'd like it to be, but I still think it's something is portable and, and walking around with. And it has the haptic touch, which I think is pretty slick. But um, and then I think the low end it starts like 700 bucks and goes up to like 11 or 1200 bucks depending on how tricked out you want it to be but that's yeah, not bad if you want and then of course on the other end of the spectrum we have <laughs> the Sega Genesis Mini with the ultra you know super control so there you go and of course um, yeah I don't know if you can see it back there let's see is it yeah it's kind of hard to see is it that side nope nope let's see if you can see it back there there you go so Right there, I got a couple of these. These are like these mini retro arcades, right? I have Centipede and Tempest, and they announced Dragon's Lair, which I'm just stupid excited about. So that's gonna come up. The, uh, they're gonna have pre-orders for that at the beginning in, or the end of this month, I think. So yeah, cannot wait, man. They're gonna do this mixed with a uh, Android, uh, Android, <laughs> Asteroids. They're gonna do Dragon's Lair and Asteroids together, and yeah, I'll be signing up for that day one. Mm. And then, of course, it was after I showed up. I didn't get a chance to show it, but uh, see it. But the next day, they actually had an arcade one up. They had a giant um, display showing off. They're going to do a Star Wars arcade cabinet. So I uh, can't wait for that, man. I'm going to be all over that. Uh, that's one. I guess that one will come out towards the end of the year. And yeah, I'm definitely buying that one. So, <clears throat> excuse me. All right. So. I got no one here. Um, well, I mean, I got some people here, but everyone's being really quiet or distracted or forgot how to type. So uh, I was going to do a reveal, but I'm revealing it only to myself. So should I do it? All right. If you guys think I shouldn't do it, say no. All right. <laughs> mm. If I could just sit here with a blank screen, you know, until somebody shows up and tells me to do it. But, nope. All right. I guess I'll just jump in. Okay, so I'm going to flip over all the cards and reveal the fact that you guys didn't want to guess or couldn't guess. So here you go. So in reality, I am making the world's first video game starring Tribbles. Tribbles from Star Trek. That is the subject. So let's bust it out. Here you go. So there's the, there it is, man. There is the big secret. So if you guys remember before, I had like a little spherical kind of thing. So I guess that was a hint for you guys. But so um, here's the situation. So 
what I have is the rights to make a video game based off of the Tribbles and the Glommers. The Glommers are little genetically engineered creatures that were created by the, Vul uh, the, the Klingons in the animated series. So the Tribbles actually made two appearances in the original Star Trek. Uh, obviously, Trouble with Tribbles, and then uh, More Tribbles, More Troubles, the animated series, where the Tribbles got genetically altered so they're not born pregnant anymore. So they're actually more viable as a pet, um, but they still like eating the old Quadratrichicali, so that's, that hasn't changed. But the Klingons also genetically engineered a Glomer, which is designed to hunt down and eat Tribbles. So, excuse me. So that is the premise of the game. So the game will start off with the Tribble basically getting caught on a spaceship doing what he does, which is eating Quadratrichicali. And he gets busted, and as punishment, the captain, just being a bit of a jerk, decides to beam the Tribble into the core of the planet, which the molten core is, is expanding. So as your little triple guy, you have to desperately try and get your way upward and get yourself out of this predicament. Um, because the triple is mixed in with Quadratrichicali when he gets beamed, that also gets beamed down with them, so that explains why it's kind of there, right? And he collects it along the way. So, uh, a lot has changed since I last showed you the game. Uh, obviously, the character, <laughs> the characters are in place now. So I'll give you a look at that. So there you go. There is our triple. Uh, I don't have a walk animation yet, so right now he just kind of like hobbles back and forth. Uh, I'm gonna improve that, but I do have like the jump, you know, and he does some nice little squash and stretch there. You know, as he jumps around, and he can hang on the walls, of course, you know. So he's, yeah, some really nice squash and stretch for him, give him a little life. Um, everything else is pretty much what you saw before. I got the lava. Uh, my artist, Daniel, came up with some beautiful work on that. So the lava's in place. The uh, the little pops, the bubbles, and the, the breaks there are actually a... Um, an art set that I actually found in the Unity store. So, dropped in and it looks perfect. It's working really great for me, so I'm really happy about that. So, I was able to plug that in. Uh, it was actually designed for water, so I just did a color correction on it, so it, it matches and kind of lines up with that. So, let me make sure that I didn't mess this up. Yep. All right. So, yeah, you guys are being unusually quiet today. You're just in total awe of the fact that I actually revealed it, I guess. But, <laughs> all right, and here we have a glomer. Check him out. There you go. So he's doing his thing. When he sees you, of course, he chases after you, all right, and then walks back to his original position. And if he catches you, boom, he does damage like that. But, of course, you can squish him, right? So that's all in place. So... You can kind of get a sense too, right? I had a scorpion character as the placeholder. Now you can kind of understand why I chose that because it just seemed to, to fit well, right? In terms of like the general proportions, right? And the menacing kind of look about them, but glommers from the animated Star Trek series. So that's uh, that's actually what I have rights to is just Tribble and glommers. Uh, unfortunately, nothing else, but you know, everything else is like... <laughs> <laughs> would be going through CBS and you know and, and Paramount and trying to get permission which would get really expensive really fast but I'm just I'm thrilled actually to have the rights to be able to do this so you know um, and then it's with a partnership of the way it happened was actually partnership through the company that was founded in partnership with uh, David Gerald who actually wrote the original screenplay for Trouble Tribbles and his business partner a fine gentleman named Miles who is my business partner now uh, he and I working together, and uh, this is the game we sort of like sat down and came up with. Um, I, of course, had grandiose ideas from the beginning. I had like way too overblown, and he kept pulling me back. He kept pulling reins back and just said, I want something more simple, you know, just something, you know, smaller scale. And after all the back and forth, this is what we kind of came up with. And um, I think it's, in the end, I think it's going to play pretty well. So, there you go. We have... Triples and glommers. And there, oops, messed up. There you go, squished him. So right now, he actually, even if he's jumping up, I may change that. Um, if he's jumping up, he does um, damage when it, the 
Glamour runs into him. I don't know if I, I, I want that to be legit or not. Um, kind of feels almost like a cheap shot. I think I think other games would treat that as if you're in the process, of, you have to be jumping down to actually do damage, right? So, oops, I just played poorly there, and I just died. So I may actually revise that. Um, it is set up now where if you're hanging on to the wall and he runs into you, you take damage. So let's see if I can find an example here of that. Yeah, this one will work. Oops. So if I come down here, boom. So even though I'm above him, it doesn't matter because I'm actually still not falling on top of him. I'm just hanging on the wall. So there. So that actually works okay. But I will probably be revising that one so you can't get like a cheap shot where you're just like at the last minute doing like that. Oops. <laughs> well, okay, bad example. My timing was off that time. Let me see if I can do that better here. Yeah. Well, I mean, okay, that one, actually, that was legit. Because that one, I was actually physically on top of it. So I think that one was a legit hit. But I'm more kind of concerned how the game plays is if you're, like, in the process of rising up. And it feels like a cheap. Yeah. No, I mean, that was okay as well. But And right now, I only have one squish, which is just center squish. I'm going to obviously do uh, alternate versions, too, where it's like uh, you can... You know, depending on which side you hit, he'll squish that direction. So, I gotta add that as well. Don't know if I'll get to that today. I was started playing with sound effects, which they are there, by the way. I, didn't even, I have it muted right now, so let me turn that back on. Okay, look, I'll pause the music for a second so we actually hear our tribbles. There you go. Does that sound like a triple? There you go. And right now, he only does it when he's like stationary on the ground. Um, I may, I'll play with that, you know, but it's just sort of a good setup right now. But I just started plugging that in, so that's definitely subject to adjustment. But all right. And then, of course, he gets damaged, so this is what it sounds like. There you go. Pretty much what a triple should sound like. And then I don't have any sounds for the glamour yet. I'm going to have to introduce that, but I guess I'm recorded. Um, so, in the animated series, the glamour... Yeah, I'm going to mute him again. So, the, the glamour actually did have sound effects, but it was more just like... It was like an electronic like buzzing noise right so I, I took a little creative liberty with that and added a little bit more it's still kind of like in the same vein but still a little more growly a little more monster like so I'm going to probably play with that today get that the ball rolling on that but oops and then you can see a little quadrature quadrature I just call it QDC the wheat the space wheat I got that in place and you see how they kind of like sit in different places too. Uh, technically, obviously, uh, if you go back and watch the animated series, you can see that um, it was like, you know, the, the wheat was yellow, right? But, you know, when it got beamed, you know, the planet, the atmosphere, it changed it. So that's my that's my story. I'm sticking to it. It's just because I, if I went with the high yellow, I think it would just sort of like blend in with the lava and it would sort of like be harder to separate. And it was actually, I, I can't even take credit. It was my artist originally came with the idea of going in that direction with it. And I think looking back, it was a smart move. Oh, look at that. That's wrong. Okay, I got to fix that because they're not hanging. They're actually moving on their own. So let me figure out who this is. I got to fix that one. Where am I? Where's the player? There he is. All right. So this is section five. That's an easy fix. So let me just come back here to my levels. Excuse me. Okay. Where's my player? Oh, it didn't load. It does this sometimes. You double click on it and it just does not want to load sometimes. All right. So.
Secret word. Where's my hidden? Let's see. I didn't think about that before. Let's see. Um, I want that to hang with the background. So the grid, background. Hmm. So if I remove the cover, why did I not notice this before? That's strange. Oh, you know, I think what happened is I just let it live because the cover had a uh, higher layer depth. So I may be able to get away with that anyways. Jump reward, like so. Yeah, so if we put the cover back on, it should be hidden. It is. Ooh, kind of. Okay, I may have to alter that. Hmm. Yeah, I think I'm going to do that. So let's go cover. Cover. Switch that to the proper tiles. Oh, put the music back on. All right. Let's clean this up so we can hide what we got going on down there. Corner piece. There we go. And then match that one. There it goes. And we're still seeing a little of that green stick out, aren't we? Crap. All right. All right. I guess I have to change this. We can come down like that. Okay, there, and I'll mix that up, like so, there, uh, yeah, there it is, um, yeah, I think I'm okay with that, there, so now the, the hidden one is actually hidden, you don't see it, so, we're good there, alright, that's auto saved. So let's go back out and try this again. All right. So just in case I keep playing like crap, um, I'm gonna double click and go into God mode. All right. Obviously, I'm gonna have something there when you hit a hidden area. Right? It's gonna crumble away. That that is very much on the to-do list. And we're still early days. We're still very much early days here, of course. So there's still a bunch of things that need to get addressed. And that's one. It functions, it's just not nearly as pretty as I want it to be. Oh. Alright. Why am I collecting everything? I don't know. Don't have to, but... Oh, I missed him. Now you did. Oh, screwed that one up. There it goes. Oh. I'm in god mode, so it doesn't matter. There it goes. Okay. Cool. Let's see. Do I like the placement there? I may want to actually flip that one over. Hmm. Just change the direction on that one a little bit, I think. Let me make sure I can get to it okay. Yep. Okay, I can grab it. No problem. But I think I'm going to flip it. Let's just reload that. And then we just have to go like, oops. 
take that, and then tell you what. Oops. Put it back up one, and then we'll rotate it so it's just hanging like that on the ground. Yeah, that looks good. Okay. Put the cover back on, and we're all set. It's still hidden. Good. Okay. Alright, this is bugging me too. When it first starts, all of the lava splashes happen right in the middle. And they start there and they kind of branch out. So let me just mix that up right now. Because that's... I keep noticing that. I just dropped that in today, I think. So let me just... It gets randomized after the first time it goes. But I just want to start off with it in different places. Just kind of randomly pushing them out. Like so. Like that. Yeah, this is a really nice little bit of sprite animation that I found in the store. And it was pretty cheap. I think it's like 16 bucks or something like that. And that was money well spent. Like I said, it came off as blue because it's designed for water. But, I mean, it, it was so easy just to change the... The, the color space on it and just make it match my lava much better but yeah that that adds a ton I think just really brings it all to life yeah and I'm gonna put a little animation in here to show a transition that'll be coming down the line all right all right why am I picking stuff up doesn't matter Alright, I'm going to put in God Mode so I just don't have to worry about screwing up. Because I want to go through all the levels and check, make sure they're behaving the way they should. Oops, die. Alright, he's good. <clears throat> there. Yep. So, yeah, all the lava's new. Uh, right now I have it just sort of like doing that little vibration and the gushing kind of thing. Uh, I'll definitely want to update that. So it, rather than the whole thing kind of shimmering, shaking, I'm just going to have like the, the, the top of it. So it looks more like an Old Faithful about to erupt. But that was just a quick thing that I did. And probably have to go to joints to do that because I just want two of the four points on the polygon to actually move around. So I may have to do that with, get fancy and do that with joints, but we'll see. All right, so that's all good. <laughs> I didn't notice that before. I made a little T there. Don't know what that means. Oh, T for triples. That's it. Yeah, that's. I meant to do that. Get out of my way. So, and what I tried to do too is that. Uh, with the glomer, especially when he's walking around, I wanted him to sort of have a 3D feel, right? That was really important to me. So even though he's a 2D sprite, you see here, right? I worked really hard to sort of like get some rotation and motion on the body to try and give it a true 3D look. All right? So hopefully it comes across that way, like that. And then of course, you see the lava rises up over time. So that's to dissuade you from wanting to go back to previous levels. And it also means that I don't have to worry about the previous levels and I can just hide them, turn them off. So I got less stuff going on. Which, by the way, let's, let's see what we got right now. We're uh, 23 draw calls. I'm pretty happy with that. 22, 23, 24. Yeah, I'm happy with that. That's a fantastic number. That's going to give me a lot of room to play with and still have some great performance. So that's fantastic. And there's probably, ah, there's probably some more I can still do in here to tweak it just a bit more but I mean just as a start I'm really happy with that number all right that looks good uh, that one actually I might want to flip let's see check that level number that Q 
QDC on the right side there. I think I'm going to flip him around. This is for level 3. Yeah. That's a nitpick thing, but if I do it now, I, I won't have to bother again. That was level 3, I said. Oop. Ah. Sloppy. Oh, wait. There's another one. I don't think the... Uh, yeah. Look at that. He's moving separately of the background. So I'm going to have to fix that one, too. Okay. Let's come back up here. Three and four. Okay. That's four. Fix that in just a second. Home stretch. Last one's to check here. All right. He's stuck in the background. That's good. So are those guys. Yeah. All right. And then... Oops. I learned how to do that better. And there we go. All right. So let's go ahead and revisit three and four. This guy. Oops. Let's just flip him on the X there. Done. Uh, yeah, actually, I guess I could do the same thing with him. Yeah. <laughs> it looks like it's a creature with eyes. I'm cool with that. Okay. So, same situation here. We need all of the temporary wards to be stuck on the background tile, so. Oh, it's hidden, that's why. Temporary wards. All right, we put him there. And they're still covered, so I should be able to get away with that. All right. Yeah, let me go through and check that one more time. Just race through here. Yeah, just trying to make sure that those little green QDCs are actually sticking on the mid-ground. I think I'm noticing it more now because originally I didn't have that that mid-ground tile set moving as much up and down. So it's much more pronounced now. So as a result, I'm noticing it on the levels where they aren't stuck to it. Ah, that's my first hit. Yep, good. They're sticking. Yep. Alright. Go away. Yep. Good. Alright. Alright. And this is when I just turned around. I like that better. That looks good. Get over there. All right, so this is one I just fixed. And good. And I don't see it sticking out. Let me go back into God mode so to make sure I can play with this and not worry about taking damage. Good. All right, so I'm just checking up here to make sure that the, the QDC doesn't stick out while I'm moving around. And I don't see it anywhere. Good. Cool. Whoa. I don't see it anywhere, anywhere. What happened there? That's not good. Que es What is that? Um, check cover. Temporary ward. Oh, I screwed up. Look at that. I parented temporary ward not to the background, but to the other reward. Which I shouldn't call it temporary ward, by the way. I should actually call that reward now. But, uh, yes, yeah, so that was my screw up. I just did the parenting to the wrong thing. Okay. I'll fix that here in a second. Uh, and I know that it, it stuck with the background, so I don't have to bother checking again. 
And those are moving. Okay, let me fix that. Boom. Alright, just a parenting issue right there. And let's check the cover. Put that back on. Yeah. Just out of curiosity. Alright. Let me come back to that. I want to do one last check just to make sure. Now that it, it's actually turned on, I want to make sure that it's not going to peek through. Just going to duck these guys. Just scream it through this. I'm in god mode, why do I care? Pride. I'm playing it like I'm doing it for real. Squish. Alright. And then I just go across. Still in god mode. This is what I care about right here. No, not this one. Yeah, yeah, this one. I am right. All right, I just wanna make sure that that one QTC doesn't peek out there and it looks like it can't. I don't see it anywhere. That's good. Unless that's him sticking out up there. That's funny. Ah, uh, I can live with that. Oh no, that is a second one. Okay, yeah. Good. And there we go. And those guys look good. They're about... Okay, good. All right. I pretty much consider that done. All right. For anyone just joining or just not paying attention so far. Uh, so this is the game I've been working on for a couple of months. And I just formally revealed today that it is based on Tribbles from Star Trek. So this is the little Tribble character. There you go. And it's based on Tribbles and Glommers. Uh, unfortunately, it's the only thing I have rights to in terms of Star Trek universe. Uh, so no Klingons, no Vulcans, no Kirk Bones. It'd be nice, but <clears throat> not gonna happen. Not unless you guys wanna like front me some serious cash, which, yeah, no. So, but it's still, you know, I can still do a fun game. And really excited to be actually making a, the, the world's first video game starring Tribbles, right? I'm just like to have the opportunity. I mean, normally, you know, a small crew people, right, our sm small game devs normally don't get the opportunity to do a an actual famous IP, so I'm I'm very I'm very excited. And the cool thing too is that uh, my business partner on this, the Miles, the gentleman that is running the business side of the triple stuff, uh, I showed him a demo when I was back in LA, and he was totally digging it, which is fantastic news. <laughs> you know that that's the guy that I definitely got to keep happy, right? You know. That's the thing, man. When you're dealing with IP, you know, you got people above you that you got to make sure that they're digging it as much as you are. So, all right. That's good. I think we're there. Let me fill my drink up here. Um, so I guess one of the things I need to do is add some audio to the, uh, the bomber. And like I said, I, I've got like a ton. That's the thing I've been collecting over the years is just sound effects libraries so I got plenty of that and I got some nice content um, you guys can offer your thoughts so give me one sec alright so just give me some guidance here so let's go um, Amazon I'll show you real quick where the source material is coming from. If it'll load. Worse than you have immobilized. All right. Let's come back here. There you go. So these are glommers that were introduced in the More Troubles, More Troubles episode of the animated series. And 
Hey, my contention is Paramount says that the animated series is canon, so there's nothing wrong with using glommers. But, um, yeah, I'll mute the audio here for a second. Clean up all the dribbles there. So, listen what a glommer sounds like in the animated series. It's like electronic chirp. It's called a glomma. Watch. That's. Well. Yeah. At least it's. So it's, you know, that's what I'm I'm working with there. That's that's what a glomer sounds like, in the animated series. So, um, I'm taking a little creative license off of that. So let's see if I got. Um, yeah. So, kind of rifting off that idea, I mean, something high-pitched, but I want to do something a little better than just an electronic noise, so here's some of the sound effects I'm playing with. There you go. That's like the uh, attack sound. Here, you can do that. You got that one. I got... That's when he's charging across. And that's when he's, like, looking around. And he, that's when he gets squished. Yeah, and this is when he looks and he sees you and he does a startled the eyes dart out um, jump back in there show you that again yeah yeah so when he first makes contact the eyes dart out like that so those different sounds so I just started putting those together. Started that last night. Finished that up this morning. And uh, right now I got them all as one sequence because I was uh, I'm using uh, SoundForge, which is great for individual tracks. But as far as I know, they still don't have multi-track editing. So I was going over into uh, HitFilm, a nice little editing program that I have. But HitFilm doesn't like to export audio only. It likes to export video. So I had to like produce a video and bring it over here so I can actually re-export re audio only. So let's go new and let me make sure I got that correct. So it's attack, charge, recover, yeah. Yes, yeah, so that's the attack sound. So if it makes contact with you, that's the sound it'll play. Alright. Excuse me. Alright, so I'm going to save that directly into excuse me. Uh, where's my documents? Hey, why am I not seeing it? Desktop. Really? This PC. Documents. Do it that way. And I can finally name him. <laughs> I got rid of prototype. It's now called Triple Troubles. So there you go. Which, by the way, is the name of the game. Trouble Troubles? Triple Troubles video game. Why not? Right? It's recognizable. All right, so assets, uh, sounds, glomer, and we'll call this glomer attack. That's good. Come back over here. All right. And this is the run, so I'm gonna cut that right down to where it starts. And that's more than enough time, I think, for him to ever like go from one side to the other. So that should be sufficient. So let me hit save on that. Let me come back to my folder. Glomer. Oops. Not that. That one. There he goes. Uh, charging. Got that. All right. Close those two. That's good. And let's see. Wait, that one is. Oh, that's recover. Okay. Yeah. So this sound effect plays if he charges and misses you, and either like almost falls over the edge or like runs into the wall. So it plays this sound effect because there's like a half second recovery.
cover. Okay. Done, done. And, of course, squished. Yeah, meaty and painful. Get right in there. Okay, so let's save him. Squished. All right, and finally. Did I say that? Uh, yeah, surprised. Excess. There we go. Good. All right. I'm sure I'll have some more sound effects that I'll be adding to the the glomers over time, but for right now, that should get us part of the way into this. All right. So let's go into our prefab for the glomer start dropping some stuff in here oh another thing I want to do too so as much as I am enjoying uh, unity's uh, 2d tile features which they're they're actually really good for the most part one of the things I don't like is uh, as soon as you go that route man anything that's 3d will always fall behind the tiles right and I've tried everything so the situation is I need the characters to be sprites right but if you're animating in Maya, which I am, here you go, speaking of. So, like, I'm over here in Maya doing the animation, of course, right? So, um, and when I export that out as an FBX and I go into Unity, Unity automatically just says, okay, this is a, a model. It's a, it's a 3D model. It's like, no, guys, it's not. It's actually, uh, yeah, <laughs> you know, it's, <laughs> it's very much 2D, but... Unity is just going to treat it like a 3D model regardless. As a result, what I'm having to do, and I did this for the Tribbles, is I have the original animated model, and then I, I overlay uh, sprites on top of it. So if we just look at like one tuft, for example, you know, we can actually see there's like the original uh, right here. Yeah. Oh, no, that's the red one. Sorry. Uh, that's the original there it is so yeah so here's the original model right that came in but it's treated as a mesh which I cannot get a mesh to overlay on top of the tiles I have no control over that so what I've ended up having to do is just bring in a whole new set of sprites and then match them up exactly to where the original mesh is and then there's the sprite for that so you, you see like well I got it turned off here okay Oh no, because he's behind it, but yeah, I can see the outline. This is the mesh version, right? So let me turn that off, and then you can see, you know, here is the, uh, the sprite version. So I, I've done that for the Tribble, and I need to do that for the Glomer as well, but it's going to get a little more complicated because the Tribble basically only has one joint per sprite, right? You know, there's all these different little various tufts that move around when he's going, but the Glomer, on the other hand, he has those antennas, right? Antennae? Um... And they're IK based. So what I'm going to have to do, I think, is try and rig that sprite in Unity and make the joints match exactly like the same animation. So that's going to kind of suck. Uh, that's going to be probably some back and forth trial and error, but at least I can get most of them like set up with sprites and layered on top. All right. So a little digression there because I was just mentioned the fact that I have some of them already attached, like the body here. So I started to do that when I realized it was going to be a big pain, so I stopped down on that. Uh, let me turn off the autosave because every time I make an adjustment, it changes everything in all the different scenes. So let me hold off on that for the moment. All right, and let's get some sounds going. Let's come up to my... Here's our glomer. Let me 
shrink this down so it fits in our space. There it goes. All right, so let's add some sound effects. Let's go audio. Oops. Audio. Oh. Audio clip. Got it that time. All right. Uh. I just call it my sounds. I'm gonna go. Um, really? There it goes. My audio, which I need to add one. He actually doesn't even have one attached yet. So let's just go ahead and just do a audio source. Whoa. What did we just do there? All right, it. I think it just freaked out. Let's try that again. All right, now it's happy. Don't plan awake. Leave this 2D. That's all good. Reverb. All right, and then what I'm gonna probably do is just from script is I'll keep track of where the player is, and I will have the glommer's uh, volume sort of adjust on the fly, so he's not like growling. Um, when he's like five million miles away. Uh, oh, speaking of which, I think I'm missing the growling sound effect too, aren't I? One sec. Oh, let me one sec here. Yep. Just gotta do a quick email. Hang tight, guys. Almost done. Just wheeling and dealing. Got all these kind of things going on. I'd be done if I could type. I cannot. I can't even type my own name. Let's see. Just checking my stupid spelling. Let's see. All right, sorry about that. Didn't mean to get distracted, but that was an email I had to respond to. Business stuff, you know how that is. All right. Okay, so we have the audio source. That's good. And let's actually attach it to the script. That sounds, really? Wait, 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 why am I not saying, did I not make it public? What's up with that? No, I didn't. That would do it. Okay. Now we'll attach his little audio source. Done. And let's add the sounds. Um, I also want to do one more. Right, let's see. Sounds. Glamour. Let's see. Is it growl? All right, so that's one I don't have in there yet because I didn't alter it, so I didn't bring it into that other program. So we're gonna go sounds, grammar. Yeah, growl. So yeah, the growl sound effect, I just wanna have it where he occasionally just randomly does that. So, you know, you hear it, you just know, uh-oh, he's coming. But it'll only do it when you're in a certain range, right? That'll be the trade-off. Okay. All right, so let's add these guys. So we got one, two, three, four, six. So we'll start with a growl. Um, then we 
can go surprised, and he can charge, and he can attack, and then he can recover, and then finally get squished. Good. He's idle. All right. So just for the sake of argument here in the beginning, I'm going to let him just growl randomly and not worry about distance. So, uh, next growl, uh, we'll do down here. Time plus, I'm gonna do a random. And we'll say it could be anywhere from three to uh, seven seconds. We'll start with that. We can adjust it later on. All right, so if he's idle. Time is greater than or equal to the next growl, then let's growl. Ew. Ah. Set, isn't it set clip? Oh, just clip. Overcomplicated that, didn't I? All right, so then it's a uh, glomer growl. And I guess I could go ahead and play. Oh, no, it isn't it. All right, let me just bust out player. My audio, really? Audio source, right? Audio source, my audio. Oh, it's like that, right? Now you happy? No. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. There you go. Now he's happy. Play the pitch just a little bit, so we get a little variance to it every time it plays. Say equal to. This is gonna be really narrow. I don't want it to be much. So we'll say 0.95 to 1.05. So just a little bit of a tweak there. Audio play. Yeah. yeah, that should be good enough. Yep. Yeah, with play, of course, unlike uh, play one shot, play will shut down any audio that's currently playing and just play that one. Or like animation, you have to tell it to stop and make sure you re rewind the animation. So uh, animation and audio behave differently there. But that should be good. Um, oh, and let me iterate the next one. Do a next route is equal to, and I'll just borrow this. Done. Okay. So now he should growl occasionally. Let me go ahead and mute my music so I can hear this for a second. And let this play. Okay. It's not playing. <clears throat> Index was out of bounds of the range. Oh, because I because I took it off autosave because it was being a jerk and taking forever. So let me actually hit save. 
There it goes. Wow. Okay, that's playing way too frequently. So let's go bump that up 10 to 15 seconds. <clears throat> yeah. I think it sounds okay. I think it's kind of ominous. Speak, buddy. Play back to back. It, that can't be right. How could it play back to back? Uh, the time is greater than or equal to so. Huh. All right. Let me check that. That doesn't make much sense, does it? All right. Because, yeah, once it plays, it should jack up the next, next growl to at least... 10 to 15 seconds later. Five thousand, six one thousand, seven one thousand, eight one thousand, nine one thousand, ten one thousand, eleven one thousand, fourteen. Let's see. Maybe. That's weird. I mean, the only thing I can think of is that it's looping around before it has a chance to even. Get iterated up. Yeah, maybe that's it. Maybe something to do with the, uh, the play request is delaying it. So it's getting played back to back. If not, I can just do a uh, if uh, like a a bool of if it's playing. Oh, I hate this. There it goes. doing it like fractions of a second here that pitch time all right so I thought that was actual seconds wasn't it in time time in seconds time here ah, stupid go away what the hell that makes no sense why would it keep firing off Fourteen. 
Yeah, so I mean, it, it did jack it up big time. So, but why would it loop through three times? If it's greater than or equal to next growl, but then next growl is getting its new assignment right here. So what the heck? I don't know, for, for whatever reason, it seems like it's actually is on a fixed update, right? And it's playing through it multiple times before the next row actually gets assigned. Uh, all right. I don't understand why I have to do this, but... That makes no sense to me because I iterated up there, right? So maybe it's something to do with the random range. Let me just check. Okay, I'll leave that for a second. So let me just say if I go uh, plus four. So I'm just going to hard code four seconds. So it has to wait four seconds before it plays. It is something with the random range that is not providing like legit. Oh. No, no, there it is. It's doing it again. What the hell? It's almost like there's multiple. Oh! It's almost like there's multiple versions. <laughs> I'm the idiot. There are multiple versions. There's glommers. There's multiple ones appearing at that moment. So I'm focusing on that one stupid guy, and there's other ones because I didn't set a distance yet. That's what I need to do is put a distance so it can, like, not make that sound if he's too far away. <sighs> that was me. That was totally me. Okay. <laughs> idiot. <laughs> oh, you idiot. Okay. So then what I got to do is do a check to see if he's within range, um, which I don't think I get the value yet. All right, I'm going to fix that. Do a quick restroom break before I go. Wake you guys up with some bombs here. There you go, guys. All right, hang tight, guys. Quick restroom break. I'll be right back.
All right. Okay. We're back. Ooh, sorry about it. One sec. Let me uh, move this mic. Hold on. Hang tight, guys. There you go. Just drooping down there. Okay. So. Yeah, all right. So now, now I know what the issue is. What I need to do is make sure the triple actually knows where the player is. So. I guess what we could just have him do is when he actually comes to life is just find the player. Um. Or should we go to the game controller and find out which section he's actually in? <clears throat> um, <clears throat> I guess we do it off of X and Y. So let, let's just start with that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Save. Private game object. Player. All right, that'll work. Game object. Find. All right. Make sure that I didn't capitalize. I might have. Yep, I did. Let me go capital there. So now we know where player is. So now we can check to say if he's within a certain distance of the Y. And then I guess X as well. Um, mm, you know what? I'm just going to limit him to the Y, I think. So if I have a growl sound effect, I guess I actually need to do a growl animation, I think, too. Alright, I'll add that. Okay, so we'll say. Is it growl? Alright, I could put this back where it should be. Because now we figured out it was just my total screw up. <clears throat> Let's see. <clears throat> Excuse me. I guess we just do it with volume control, couldn't I? Uh, why not? Uh, let's see. Quick reference to figure out simple way distance. Is it? This is between two objects. Oh, there it is. Victor three distance. <clears throat> yeah. I'll just toss right in here. Distance. Equal to. All right. Yeah, that'll work nice. So figure out the distance between the the triple and glomer. So we'll say uh, their transform position. Oops. Game object transform. I'll do position. I'll do roll position. Why not? All right. So now we have the distance, and then we can adjust his audio based on that. <clears throat> so let's see. So just guessing what a good distance would actually be for zero. So 
20. <clears throat> and then we'll say if he's like 10. If he's 10 away, then he can be full volume. So 10 is full, 20 is basically zero. All right. is equal to <clears throat> um, 20 minus 10 See, divided by two, <clears throat> and we'll just do a min max. That zero one. He's happy. Good. All right. So that should get us. So if it's twenty, it's going to be down to zero and then if it's down to 10 it would be full blast all right mute my music for a second and let's test this out oh crap I never have stupid corgi engine script and the inspector are just Raiders, the frame rate. I have no idea why. Let's see. All right, let me check the distance. And then also do this. We'll say four to seven. I get the feeling I'm gonna have to adjust this big time because I'm gonna be have to be like right on top of them to actually hear it, I think. I'll stop. Okay. Anytime, buddy. Oh. Jumping with 55. That's peculiar. <laughs> so I'm not really moving, but I'm getting these values that are radically ping ponging. <clears throat> Unless there's a Z thing going on there, which there shouldn't. That's weird. Huh. All right, that's another peculiar one. Oh, no, no. That's, no, sorry. I'm tricking myself again. That's because I got the other bombers around there somewhere above my head. So that's, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. All right, I'm going to change that pitch range. So that doesn't seem to be nearly enough. So I'm going to say go extreme, go eight to two. Normally the pitch seems to like go to extremes like right away, but that time I didn't hear really any real difference to his pitch. Come on, buddy. That's good.
Yeah. So if I had a little animation on him to go along with the sound effect. Yeah, I think that's sufficiently creepy. And I'll let you know that there's a little guy around there somewhere. Good. <clears throat> Alright, so first thing we gotta do is, yeah, that's why it's taking so long for the first one. So drop that to four. To seven. Okay. <clears throat> Right, so right here I should be close enough. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. And I'm only hearing him. So these other big 40, 58 numbers, that's from these guys up here. So of course I'm not gonna hear them yet, because they're out of range. Good. So this actually worked pretty well. Squish. Alright. Definitely in that sound effect there. Alright, now I should hear him. There it is. Okay. <clears throat> cool. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we'll do that. Precharge. Um, let's come back into prefab. Let's go back to our glomer. Come on, buddy. That is annoying, man. You double click on it and it doesn't actually pop up. That's a bug. Okay. So surprised. Yeah. So that is the next one. <clears throat> All right, we don't have to do a distance check because if he's going into a pre-charge mode, that means you're within range. So we're just gonna play it outright. We'll actually crank the volume up to the full one just to make sure, like so. And then, yeah, we can leave the range. <coughs> Excuse me. So, <coughs> oops. Actually, change it to the right sound effect there. All right. And then we just do the charge. He's going to be doing that either way. And charging should be next. Yes. So, two. All right. And then post charge. Three. Oops, no, actually four, because three is attack. <clears throat> I guess I could split that off into its own separate function. Yeah, I'll clean that up later. I just want to see it work first. And then returning, he's going to walk back. Right now, there's no sound effect for that. But that should be all the sounds right there. Let's find out. All right. <clears throat> Let's see. Weird. Um, unless it's getting played late. Surprised should sound like. Yeah. Okay. It's great. Oh, that's it. Okay. I need to put this right from the start. Because it's trying to play it after the, the wait time is already finished. That's my fault. <clears throat> and then he does the charging. Yeah. Good. Now when he does the pointing eyes, it should play that gasp kind of sound effect there. Weird. It's like, oh, pitch maybe? Let's just put the pitch back at one. Mm. 
least for these guys. Charging either direction, yes. Plus charge. <clears throat> okay. Whoa. <laughs> That's not good. <laughs> it's just buzzing noise. Wow. Okay, something's definitely wrong there. And even that's not playing. Okay. Um, why? something about this one that's different than the others? Oh, there probably is. Let's see, attack. Uh, well, this 44K. So that's not it. Huh. So why is that freaking out? Do I need to stop what was playing before? Precharge. Okay. One. That's all correct. So why is it playing like static noise? All right. So tell you what, we'll knock the charging one out and see if the surprise sound effect plays correctly. But I have no clue why that would be the case. Oh, okay. But it's playing the sound late. It played at that time, but it's playing it late. Hey, look at that. Nice. Welcome, welcome, man. Thank you for the cheer. Look at that. Nice way to enter a room. Thanks, man. All right. So I already spilled the beans. You missed it. So now I can't tell you anymore. No, kidding. Um, all right. So I'll give you the hint that I gave in the beginning. And I got basically <laughs> nothing. Nobody was talking. Um, like I told you before, so uh, 50 years ago, over 50 years ago, the character debuted. Uh, it's been sci-fi. It's been on five different TV series and has appeared in four different movies. So there's only so many sci-fi that have actually had that much content over the years. Mm, any guess? Anyone? No? <laughs> I need to know. Not no guess? No? Just spill the beans? Yep, yep. Yes, no, maybe. Alright. I'll just spill the beans. It is here you go. It is this little furry guy. It is a triple from Star Trek. That is what I'm doing. Oops. Lost my unity. There he goes. So, there you go. I make a video game based on Tribbles from Star Trek. That is it. So, I don't have rights to Star Trek, per se. I have rights to Tribbles, and I have rights to Glommers, which are the genetically engineered creatures that the Klingons created in the animated version to eat Tribbles. So, <laughs> that's awesome. Thanks, man. Yeah. So that's it. Finally got the wraps off of that. So um, there you go. It is Tribbles and Glommers. Um, I don't know if I still have it up. I had it up. Or, hey, there you go. Yeah. So this is what Glommers look like 
<laughs> there you go in the animated series so and because uh it's a partnership with uh the company that was founded by david gerald who actually wrote the original screenplay right and they have an agreement with cbs which allows me to do this in the first place but here you go that is a glomer and they like to eat tribbles so the klingons actually invented glomers for the sole purpose of eating tribbles because they hate them so much there you go and you can hear it's like its voice is just like an electronic chirp so and there you go this is my there you go this is my glomer guy so if we come back in this there you go here's our triple and you can hear the so this is my take on the sound effect I kind of changed it up a little bit so it's it's more like growly and less of a high pitch whine uh, so it's it's not totally authentic but I think a, a scary alien growl is a lot more interesting than a high-pitched electronic buzz noise so we'll see if I get called out on that see if they hate it but we'll, you know we'll give it time and he charges you like that and we're going the sound effects right now the sound effects are going a little goofy on me for the glamour I gotta figure that out I mean that looks awesome. How's it feel to be working on a Star Trek game? <laughs> it's actually very cool. No, it is. Um, I, I'm I'm absolutely thrilled, and it, it's been three years in the making, man. It's it's not something that's come along quickly. It took three years to finally get him get every all the ducks in a row and and get it all committed. But uh, yeah, finally there now. And yeah, dude, I'm totally excited. Uh, I, I'm I'm equal parts excited and terrified. Uh, excited because I mean this is literally the very first video game starring Tribbles, right? So that's exciting, but I'm terrified because, you know, Star Trek fans are, like, rabid fans. So, I mean, I'm hoping that they embrace it. I hope they, they like what I'm doing, but it's, you know, I mean, this is all also partnership, so I only have so much leadway in terms of what the game can or can't be. But, you know. So, yeah, I'm... I'm I'm insanely excited. So the whole idea is to try and get this thing polished and ready to go for San Diego, uh, which is less than a month away now. Where are we at? Yeah, a month away now, right? There you go. Why is this squish sound not playing there? I gotta figure that out. Figure it out in a second here. But yeah, the lava's in place now. That's that's. Uh, I still got some tweaking to do there, but for the most part, it's coming off nicely. The actual spout, I'm gonna redo that. Right now, I just added like a. A shake to it but uh, but yeah Daniel the, the guy who's doing my art for me he's doing a fantastic job he's really knocking out of the park here I think I think it's come along nicely oh crap and I'm playing like garbage now like that so so the gameplay is gonna be pretty much the demo that I showed at the convention a couple months ago right just with the souped up graphics and everything so most likely what I show next month is gonna be what you're seeing here just with a few more bells and whistles but Oh crap, come on. There you go. I'm gonna just, you know, it, it'll be a matter of how much I can plug into the game, you know, before I run out of time. Whoa, get out of there. There you go. But yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm excited and freaked <laughs> all at the same time. You know, we just have to see if it gets embraced. And I hope so. I mean, I, you know, I don't wanna make, uh, you know, the, the aliens marine game right you know colonial marine game <laughs> I don't want to replicate that fiasco uh, as an artist I love the art direction nice to see all the new textures yeah thanks yeah it's, it's coming along it's plugging in really nicely yeah I'm really happy with it yep I still got some tweaking too um, w when he does the fall you know he stretches out but right now if he hit something it still registers as a fall, so he kind of stretches when he shouldn't, but that's something that I'll get fixed here in the, the near future. All right, almost through here. There it goes. And then, like, the crumbly sound effects when he breaks through a barrier like that. All right, got to move up a little bit here. Boom, catch, and then like that, and I beat it. There you go. So there is the current demo in its current form. But, uh... Yeah, so that's it. You know, cat's out of the bag, man. Th there be tribbles. 
Uh, ultimately, I'm going to do some touches too where there'll be different colored ones that you can unlock through the gameplay uh, just over time along with, uh, you know, little accoutrements, right? You know, you can dress up your triple in certain ways. That, that'll be the game plan, you know, so you can personalize it a bit. Oh, really? I thought I had that one. Oh, crap. I keep missing him. There he goes. All right. So let me come back to what I was playing with here a second ago. And, oh, so interesting side note, too. So I don't know if you how much history you have with triples, but... Um, so I have rights to, like I said, trebles and glomers, but not the actual sound effects. Uh, I was not, I'm not allowed to use the original sound effects. So I had to sort of like, you know, dig up history and reverse engineer how they did it and actually replicate my own sound effects to make it sound like what they had originally. So if this sounds close to what you remember, then good. <laughs> because these are my sound effects that I've engineered myself to try and sound like the original TV series may not be exactly perfect, but I think it's within the realm. Uh, hopefully it won't be a situation where a, 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 a big fan will come back and say, that doesn't sound right. Uh, all this paperwork must be a pain to deal with and what you can or can't use. It, it's a challenge. Yeah, I mean, it, it definitely adds an extra thing to it. But, I mean, it's, it's more easier to say what I do have than what I don't. You know, what I do have simply is the likeness and the names for the two items right here for tribbles and glommers that's pretty much it you know anything else is like well do you have no well how about no well maybe we could do no <laughs> you know so i mean it's kind of easy you know uh challenge that you know in terms of what i can actually shove into the game and not have an army of lawyers banging down my door but uh but still i mean just the opportunity I'm still thrilled to have it anyways, right? You know, and it's making me brave enough to actually say that this is going to be a, a premium app, right? Uh, don't know about the price yet, but it's going to be relatively inexpensive compared to what most famous IP games are. So, and because I'm still kind of doing a slightly mobile focus, right? You know, this isn't, you know, this isn't some super profound detail game, but, you know, there's still going to be some plenty of gameplay in here. Uh, then when you make a great game, all you hear someone say, the triple doesn't sounds aren't right. This game sucks. Yeah, and the one I'm also, you know, and I, I have this one. I got this one in my back pocket. Um, let me, wow, sorry about that. I'm going to adjust my mic here. Sorry. Let me, actually, let me mute this for a second. Hold on. Yeah, right, sorry, my mic stand's been falling down on the job today. It's been like just gravity, so it's like wearing down on it. Um, yeah, so I, I know, and then I already got asked this like a ton of times, you know, by people I've talked to uh, privately about what I'm working on. And the first question is, oh, so, you know, like, are they pregnant? And they like make lots of triples all over the place? No. Uh, number one, because how do you deal with the gameplay? <laughs> you know, I mean, that would make it insanely complicated, insanely fast, right? I mean, you could do like the Super Meat Boy concept where they're just like spawning all over the place, but I I want to go more simple than Super Meat Boy. I don't want to replicate Super Meat Boy. This is going to be a little more casual than that. Uh, but the counter argument, too, is that in that same episode, which I was showing you a second ago, this, right? So in the same episode, when he brings... Um, you know, we have the, the classic Mr. Cyrano Jones, right? When he brings the Tribbles back on the ship, everyone freaks out at first, right? Going, oh my God, Tribbles. And he goes, no, no, no. These are genetically engineered. They're not born pregnant anymore. So these are just friendly ones now. So that's the justification. And so if you see a glomer, right? The little villain character, then that means that we're dealing with the new genetically altered Tribbles that no longer produce like rabbits right hyper rabbits so um that's my explanation of when they say well why don't they reproduce it's like well because these aren't those tribbles this is the second appearance right when they've been altered you should know that right you're a star trek fan because there's a glomer there right don't you know that so hopefully i can dodge that bullet but i'm sure there's still gonna be a bunch of people that are disappointed that you don't like in with like that makes sense to me. Thanks. <laughs> mm -hmm. But I'm sure there'll still be some fans that are going to be nutty going, but, dude, I want triples everywhere. 
well, you know, right down there, you know, at Comic-Con, right down the, the, the hall there, you know, you can buy all the triples you want. That's my partner, so go ahead. <laughs> go for it. Um, but yeah, so that's, this is the whole kit and caboodle. This is what I've been working on feverishly for a couple of months now. And, um, do the show and tell, um, at Comic-Con in San Diego next month and then work like crazy to hopefully expand it and put all the other levels and content in there. So there it is. The beans have been spilled, man. That's it, man. No more secrets. So, and then ultimately, hopefully this goes well, there's going to be additional games too. And if I get the opportunity to work on more games starring triples, uh, it won't have to be like this super secret kind of thing because, you know, Cats out of the back now, so you guys can see it from the beginning. But uh, yeah, it was a pain. That was part of the reason I I also just sort of like said, "Here you go, guys." You know, the original plan was wait until after Comic Con to you know formally announce this kind of thing. But I just I literally can't work on the game now. I've run out of stuff to work on that doesn't involve having the triples on the screen. So you know, there you go. There it is. There it is. All right, so now I gotta figure out why the sound effects are freaking out here. Uh, Precharge, status wait time. Let's see. So, it's, excuse me. All right, where am I getting my status wait time? Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. That's wait. That's why. Um. That makes no sense. Hold on. Idle. Precharge. Status wait time is zero. Uh, Precharge time. All right. So that's why I just got the wrong value there. I think that's what's going on. All right. Then we can charge. Good. Okay. That's my mistake there. charge yes okay all right so that should fix that muck up so that should the precharge should be correct now and then precharge I think that's right let me Lay it by a quarter of a second. Yeah, I gotta figure out if that delay ties into the animation. Yeah, okay. I got audio going. Whoa! Crap, he's going straight into the charge. So then what did okay and how did I have that working before? Alright. So status wait time. I'm obviously signing that value at some point, so. So status wait time is getting post charge. Okay, he's doing attack. Let's see. Hmm. Okay. Maybe that's because he just didn't have a value set before. Precharge. Oh, okay, so then let me figure out where my actual precharge is. Right here. Okay. Status wait time. There it is. Half a second. Alright, so then, okay, so let's come down here and then we'll try it this way. We'll say my audio stop. So hopefully that'll silence it and I can switch it and it won't freak out. Because right now I'm getting that nice little electronic buzz sound, which ironically is actually closer to what the 
the glommer sound like in the animated show, but to me that's just a bunch of noise. All right. Let's get up here. Crap. Why is it doing that? I guess I could do as a one shot. Let me try it that way. It's going to be finicky about the stupid thing, which that makes no sense why it's doing that, but. Um, Precharge. Alright, what did I say stop? Oh, on charge. Okay. So. Precharge. We're going to say stop that. And then we're going to do this as a play one shot. Uh, maybe. Play one shot. All right. Um, Precharge. So he is the surprised. There. Oh. It doesn't want a string. It wants the actual clip. Good. All right. So that takes care of that. Stop. Now that switches over to there. All right. Let's see if that behaves a little better. But it's still strange that... Crossfade... Status. Oh, um, uh, do you have uh, enemy texture too? Uh, I know you were using placeholder for that too. Uh, yeah, that that worm enemy. I don't. Uh, that's actually what my artist guy Daniel is working on right now. Um, that what you saw before was just something that I slapped together, right? So it's the the general concept of it, but he'll make it beautiful. Um, so the game plan right now is rather than have him start making that, that content, right, for the next world, what I want to do is actually have him do concept art for the next three worlds, right? So hopefully I will have that for press for, um, uh, I, you can tell I made it. <laughs> I'm not sure if that was a compliment or insult, but I'll just say thank you and smile. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the goal hopefully is for uh, Daniel to come up with the, the concept sketches uh, to show what the other worlds are going to look like, right? Because there's no way I'm going to have that stuff ready for the show. So I'd rather have the art to say this is what the game is going to look like in the different worlds to help really uh, – <laughs> funny guy uh, – to really help give a better impression of what the full game is going to be. So people get experience the first world and then get to look at what the other worlds are going to bring them. That is the game plan. So, yeah, so uh, hopefully he's working away on that as we speak on the other side of the world for me, and hopefully I'll get that pretty soon. And, you know, fingers crossed that you can knock those out before Comic-Con arrives because I'd really like to have those for show and tell. Um, all right, so pre-charge, doing a crossfade right there. So, is that the only other instance of it? Right there. Okay, yeah. So, he should be like that. Should play sound. All right. So, now he's doing a one shot. So, that shouldn't step on his toes. So, hopefully now we're not going to get the, the, the weird buzz thing, which I have no idea. Wow. No. Why the hell does it do that? I mean, I could just go with all play one shots, I guess, but then I lose the ability to actually stop and start. Uh, and when is a Comic-Con going on? You might get swamped having Star Trek as a booth. Uh, you know, your mouth to God's ears. Um, it is a month from today, actually, I think. Let's see. 
July, uh, yeah, July 17th is preview night. And, um, yeah, so I will have multiple cabinets set up running the game. Um, I hope so, man. Uh, the, the goal is to reach out to the press before the convention starts, so hopefully get some early word spread beforehand. And looking forward to see what happens if I can make these glommers not freak out with their noises. <laughs> um, all right, just just let's go play one shot as well. Um, right here, this guy. Uh, so what's wrong with their behavior right now? The audio, right? I mean, the audio clip, when I'm, I'm, he starts with, like, a random growl, right? And then he does a startle noise, and then he does a charging noise. But it's, like, white noise. Um, it's something to do with the way the play is working. So I'm going to fall back on the play one shot. Play one shot usually just means he can do tons, and it's no big deal. But the trade-off is once it plays, you lose control of it, and you can't stop it. But having them overlap to me is still better than having the electronic buzz noise. Here, take a listen here. No. There, that e e e e e. Let's see. So there's the growl. All right. So let me just stop this crap. This is starting to piss me off now. So, charging. So I'm just going to turn off charging. And turn off recover. So something about this, which seems like it should be... Oh, oh, oh wait a second. Uh, yeah, charging and then attack. I'm just going to turn all these guys off right now. I mean, this is legit. I set the clip, right? Set the pitch, volume, and then I tell it to, to play right yeah and that's the only there's no overrides for it so it's worked before <laughs> okay I don't know if it's something funky that's the newer version of I mean what am I in 2019 all right but now everything is one shot only yeah. Okay. So that's working. So that's fine. So even... Okay, wait, wait. If he's doing... Trying to get the growl. It's weird. So it's like the play one actually still cut it off, which is strange. Did they play? Uh, did they change the way it works in Unity with the play one shot? I thought that was a fire and forget, and you could have multiple. But it seemed like it actually cut that off. If that's the case, then I'll just go across the board with all of these doing that same thing. In that case, I'm going to knock this out for a second. If I don't have to set the clip, there's no reason to actually set the clip since I'm specifying it here anyways. All right, here you go. There you go, guys. Catch some bombs. Suffer my frustrations. All right. Play one shot. Take that out. Nice. <laughs> Thanks for the more cheer, man. Thank you so much. Cheer me up. <laughs> Uh-oh. Here he goes. Three. There he goes. Boom. 
All right, so that's all the sound. So now I've got all of his sound effects. Now switch to plays one shot. It's like he's playing it like at the wrong speed or something. Okay. Uh, all right, I'm gonna just knock all this crap out. Maybe there's something with the way the audio got imported in. For a second, that's a play one shot. Okay, the volume. All right, I'll leave the volume back on just to make sure. <laughs> Sick air. <laughs> How's it going on your end, by the way? I'm sorry, I've uh, been wrapped up on a little world here. Um, I saw your, uh, is it an ogre character? Is that what you're calling him? Or uh, the big old dude with the club? The, the dwarf smasher. <laughs> How's that coming along? Wait a second. I know why. Because it's playing it like a gajillion times in a row. That's my guess. Let's, let's, okay. I think that's what it's going to be here. Uh, Pre-charge. Um. Yeah. Yeah. So let's do this. I bet you if I go like debug, log. Oh, I'm feeling stupid now. I know this is it. Um. Let's see. Oh no, wait, it's right there. Okay. Um. Precharging. Yeah. Uh. I'm not sold yet on what I'm calling him yet. Uh, Dwarf Smasher is the most accurate, though, so far. Uh, I was going for a Lord of the Rings cave troll sort of thing. Oh, cool. Okay, that makes sense. All right. Uh, all right, so here's what we're going to do. We say... Cool. Played... Um, Do it this way. There's probably a cleaner way to do this, but I know this will work. Um, all right. If not, all right. And then I would say. Played surprised audio. So yeah, I think it's just it was playing a million times on top of itself because it's it's looping uh, fixed update style. So it's looping thirty times a second or more, and it every time it's coming through, it's trying to play it again. So I gotta create something that just has, dude, fire it once and then stop. Uh, Place uh, equals false. Uh, oh, that would be true actually. <clears throat> All right, yeah, I'm gonna kill that because I know that's fine. All right, or you know what I could do? Oh, stupid! Why don't I just? Yeah, let me do it this way. Is 
s equals precharge and just add it here so it, it can only ever play once dude where's my brain this is what I should have done 10 minutes ago really stupid I don't need you all right just need these two yeah stupid of course just play it when it actually switches states and then you're good all right growl that's good all right charging there and then here's where we do this we're not gonna play it as a one play one shot we're actually gonna do it proper because now I feel confident All right, I'll leave the pitch as one right now. Volume. Like so. There it is. Uh, brain needs to kick back and relax for a bit. Uh, working at 104% all the time can wear it down. Uh, here, that was a typo. Here, I'll correct that for you. There you go. That's more closer to reality I think right there <laughs> let's see okay so then charging is good <laughs> now I understand why it has all the problems yes it makes so much more sense now okay post charging so post charge That's good. And we'll put that here. And this is just play. Like so. Same for here. All right. And then attacking. That was just stupid. Yeah, I'm gonna go back and edit this video. I'm gonna yank that out because I don't wanna look stupid. Because <laughs> that was, you know, it's like, in hindsight, it's like, why do you think it sounds like a robot? Because it's playing it like 300 times, you know, in the span of half a second. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. All right. I'm trying to blame Unity. They, they broke 2019, man. No, it's you, dummy. There it is. Thank you. Now it's behaving. There you go. He's a little soft. I might have to bump those, the actual volume sound effects, but now he's, he's sounding all creepy and crab like and and let's see if he attacks whoa whoops okay the attack is still <laughs> whoops attack is still looping like crazy sounds less painful except for the attack yes you're right <laughs> never mind <laughs> hey you get oh damn that delay <laughs> all right this is the last one i missed this guy let me just fix him all right and then find out where the attacking actually gets placed so actually i did i dropped it in but i forgot to remove it from the other spot so <sighs> i was close man all i had to do was mark out two lines and it would have been perfect but I just gotta leave something broken. Yeah, it's good, the, the volume's low. I wanna fix the volume. Cause right now the triple's drowning him out. <laughs> no, 
Nice. All right, I feel better. That's that's. I feel much better. All right, I'm gonna duck out and do a quick restroom break, but I'll be back, and you guys can enjoy this, the massive bomb wave. All right, hang tight. I'll be right back. All right. Uh, how how do they allow this triple abuse on Twitch? Oh, jeez, man. Good point. I'm gonna I'm gonna lose my uh, family status, aren't I? Let me get like adult rating. I don't know. Triples are adorable, but sometimes you think they're asking for it. You know. I mean, did they ask to eat all that quadrature? God, I can't even say it. Quadrature to Cali. All right. I dare you say that five times fast. Quadra Church of Cali, just QTC. That's actually what I even call it, too, if you look in the game here. Because that's just a mouthful. Uh, let's see. Let me bring up a level here, real quick. Let it get. Here we go. Where is it? There it goes. Yeah. QTC. <laughs> <laughs> Your recording is sitting into PETA. <laughs> so, funny story. Actually, so this is um, this is sad. This is not actually the 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 triple from the my my partner I'm working with right now. This is a triple that came from uh, she and I. My this is my wife's right. Um, we came out to Las Vegas. What is like 15 years ago, when they had the Star Trek experience at the the Hilton, right? Or I think it was called the LVH at that point. Uh, no, I think it was still the Hilton. And uh, yeah, and they had these little guys for sale. So, you know, my wife has been a Star Trek fan for forever. So there you go. I was cool for five minutes when I told her I was going to make a game about tribbles. <laughs> you used to be able to pet it, and it would purr, but. I don't know. It doesn't want to purr anymore. I think it's just in a bad mood. You just... <laughs> That's all you can do to it now. <laughs> Five whole minutes. Yeah, it was truly impressive. Yeah. I'm working on some new stuff to try and impress her again, but, you know, until it actually gets inked. Yeah. The impress the impressive moment has come and gone. You know. <laughs> I worked on this. So... <laughs> All right. Uh, oh, yeah, I am going to do this. I'll tell you what, the simplest way to deal with this is go sounds. Glomer. Show and explore. Over here. In case they think. Oops. All right. So, I'll tell you what we'll do is we'll come back in here and we'll go into this bad boy. Um, yeah, here's he's getting squished. Uh, oh, that's surprised. 
So let's boost that. Because I can always knock the volume down, but I'd prefer to have it up high to begin with. So let's go volume. So let's crank this puppy. Let's see, is that too much? It looks like it's going to the red. This is a new version of SoundForge. I got thanks to the Humble Bundle that was recent. And it has like multiple, I'm not even sure what, there's like three sets of things that bounce now. So I'm not even sure what I should be looking at. This is a point nine. All right, let me try that. Yeah, that looks legit. Let me make sure that's going to the right spot. No, it's not. Of course, it's not. Uh, sounds lumber. Surprised. Overwrite. Squished. Yeah. <laughs> I want to boost that. I love that though. That's good. It's meaty and sad and pathetic at the same time. There it goes. Yeah. <laughs> like me. <laughs> How would you describe yourself? Meaty and sad. <laughs> at the same time. That, that's how I impress the women. <laughs> you might want to work on that pitch. Just a, just a smidge. <laughs> Empathetic. <laughs> the trifecta. Woohoo! <laughs> okay. Um, uh, okay, so squished and surprised are good now. So let me bring these other guys up. Attack. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Volume. Yeah. I like that. All right. Charging. Oops. that as well <laughs> I'm what you call a triple threat <laughs> that's how I get the ladies in in droves <clears throat> all right uh, growl yep volume <laughs> Working for me. Let's see, recover. Oh, definitely. Nope, even higher. 300%. Go a little bit more. Okay. Cover, okay. Squished. I think squished I just fixed. Yep. All right, man. Go do your thing. I'll be here for at least another, yeah, 40 minutes. That's the game plan. Uh, surprise. Okay, good. All right, so that should be everyone updated now. And let's see what we got for sounds. Let's get rid of the play one shot stuff now. Let's see. Or do I have that? Yeah. So not play one shot, just play. Clip 
is equal to minus one. Done. All right. Okay. One shot. Oh, that was the only one. Okay. Hmm. All right. Seems like it only play. It should play just one at a time. That's the way it used to work in previous versions. Is that play would shut down whoever's playing in the moment and then start this one up. So let's see if that does that now. Squished isn't playing. We're missing squished. This gonna be the best part, and it's not there yet. Yep, five. All right. Grabbed one line too many there. All right. I guess what I should do is to check on all these for the volume. So it could be the. Well, no, actually, no, no. Volume, if he's within range to be attacked, then that should always pull, play full blast. So never mind. Okay, now we can squish him, and we should hear it. Squish still sounded kind of soft. Hmm. Can I boost that? I know I'm like clipping here, but. Let's see if I can do it. get away with that. Oops. Nice. Now we're cooking. I need to add a little, I don't know, it seems abrupt. Make a little reverb on the squish, I think, because it seems to like cut sharply. Oh, stop. Yeah, I definitely need to put the pitch range back in all these guys, too. Just mix it up a little bit. Yes, yes. Yep, good. All right. 
Hopefully now we get a little variance to it, so it's not the same every time. might be a bit much so tell you what let's change all these guys uh, I used to know the uh, command for this let's edit find replace quick replace oops Scope point point nine point one. All right, yep. So I think I was going a little far with the pitch range there, but maybe some of them would be okay with the wider range. <laughs> So I'm thinking I might also do something, so like, when I die, I do this, when it goes, flies up and goes off the screen. I might do the same for the glomers as well, it may not be a terrible idea, rather than just have the squish, yeah, I have to think about it. Or maybe if I if I have the squish, if I leave it like that, I just need it to like go in a puff of smoke or something like that, so I can make it disappear. Versus just right now, it just vanishes, which is I think looks a little tacky. Oops. All right. So now. I think actually I got a situation where the triple is getting drowned out a little bit so I'm gonna like I said I, I'd rather have all of them up and then just be able to dial them down at playtime since you can only go up to one you can't like raise the volume any higher so having said that let me come back in here close that close that thank you go up one Um. Hmm. Pretty much maxed process volume. Ooh. Ah. Yeah. If I push it, it starts clipping. Oh, because I got bypass on. You're an idiot. Yeah. Yeah, even at 113, I can hear just a little bit of clipping right there at the beginning. Yeah, 109. That's as good as I'm going to get. Okay. Save. And then screech. Yeah, this we can definitely boost. Oh, more than that.
Cool. Uh, I need, obviously, sound effects here when he's with the turtle <laughs> jumping around, but that'll come in time. I gotta think about what a triple sound sounds like when it jumps. I have no clue. Nice. Oh shoot. Don't know why I'm still playing there. Okay. Good. All right. So 534. Um, I guess the one thing I can still play with is try and get all the sprites in the proper place. So I did the body. I had that working. <clears throat> all right. So let me find all the different pieces that I was starting to... And then I messed it up earlier. When I was trying to drop it in, I was dropping it on the piece, and I should have dropped it on the joint, which was my mistake. But now i got to figure out what's what here, too. This is going to be a pain. Oof. All right. even have this uh, I should actually have this broken out let's see characters grammar yeah just not the names crap all right so I know which piece that is That one, yeah. Whoa, one. All right, and then just put this at like ten. There it is. Oh, wait. Hmm. Okay. This guy scale differently? No. Hmm. Let's see if I make him semi transparent. There it goes. The old cheat. Uh, I'm starting to think I have the wrong object. Oh, I think I may. Have, I know what happened. I think I actually changed. The UV in Maya on that one. That's why that line is in the wrong spot there. All right, I'm just going to live with that. This guy just turn off that, turn him on like that, and oops, oh, sorry about that. Smack the mic, change that to enemy. Good, so yeah, the sorting layer kind of stuff, it's kind of nice because normally you have like the order and layers, which is kind of a pain. 
to try and get everyone to work together but the sorting layer allows you to group them so they'll always be on top and that's what I want is for the uh, the enemies to be above the player player to be above the the ground texture all right so this guy front leg middle nope there he is put him back up at the top front leg middle that well, then I don't think I need to flip it oh shoot maybe I don't okay hide him for a minute yeah so this is the only system I, I could think of um, I don't know if, if there's any other better unity people out there that know how to export an FBX model animation into unity <coughs> excuse me into unity and have it not treat it as mesh but treat on the import have it treated as sprites uh, I don't see any way to do that so what I'm physically doing here is just taking all these sprites and lining it up with what it considers the mesh right and yeah it's not too bad and then just hiding the geometry after the fact. Yeah, that's good. <clears throat> All right, so hide him for a second, select him, and then just like that. So yeah, this already worked once with the uh, <clears throat> with the triple. So I know this system works. It's just kind of a pain. Let's see, so he's 10, he's 11, but he needs to be set to enemy, then he's on top. Oh, he needs to be underneath, doesn't he? Nine. Cool. Yeah, it's tedious, but don't know of any other workaround for this. Put him on the bottom here, like so. Say enemy. I'm gonna put it at eight. Actually, I'm gonna boost him temporarily. Eleven. Put him on top so I can see him better. Like so. That should be. Um, tell you what, I'm going to hide all this other crap so I can see this better. Yeah, because I, that's what I figured was happening. This leg was getting obscured, so I wasn't lining it up correctly, at least in terms of scale. But we're good now. <clears throat> So now, put him back at eight. All right, and let's get the foot in there. Uh, I think that's the darker one. Nope, that's the lighter one. Okay, correct one. <clears throat> Yeah, this is when you need interns, right about here. <clears throat> foot. Attach it to the foot. This one I definitely need to flip. Right. Enemy. 11. Get them semi transparent. Shoot, I just thought about this. This is one where I actually have two different joints 
as well in the foot and the toe. So I either just kind of like have to let go of the toe animation, except that it's not going to be there, or I have to like go into the sprite and add joints that follow that other joint specifically. Which I'm not crazy about that idea either. <clears throat> Seven. There. So hide him for a second. That's not too bad. It's a little off. Yeah, that's good. All right, hide that one. Hide that foot. Turn that foot back on. Oops. Hit save. All right, so now we should have this front foot and it should be on top of the ground now. That's the goal here. Yeah. Let me zoom in here. So yeah. So you see this foot. I can see it sliding now too. <laughs> Bad animation on my part. I might have to tweak that. But that's great. That's what I'm shooting for now. Is using sprites on top of the imported geometry so it lines up correctly. And actually overlays on top. So. I might be able to get away with just doing the front legs. Come to think of it. No, because I, I want the. I want him to be on top. Yeah. No, I want him to be on top of the triple, so I'm going to have to do that for all the, the body pieces there, I guess. Um. Maybe I could cheat and not do the antenna. I have to think about it. All right, where are we at? Let's see, where are we at? Let's, uh, one sec. Ooh, hey. Let's see. Come on, update, stupid phone. Hey, we're down to only 96 degrees outside. Might be time to go for a jog. One sec. Sorry. Business stuff again. Uh, let's see. What is that? Wednesday, right? I think I might wrap up here. It's a little early, but I'm kind of Jones and I go for a run now. And oh, I'm all zoomed in. Let me unzoom. There it is. <laughs> 96 sounds great for a jog. It does to me, man. Dry heat, you know. It's not just a saying, it's the truth. I actually like it. I mean, I, you know, when it was funny because when I was in L.A., right, it was like 97, but it's also like 25% humidity, and that just, I, that sucked, man. You know, but I, no, I could be like over 100, and I can still go for a jog and be fine. Until I pass out, I don't know. There it is. U.S. Coast folks, U.S. Coast folks are strange. Dude, I cannot tell you how much I despise cold. I mean, I I was okay with it as a kid, but the older I get, man, the, the more I just absolutely hate it. Yeah. I like it warm, man. I'm defective. 
<laughs> yeah. yeah, I definitely want to add an animation here, like a little chatter noise when they're vibration noise when they're doing chatter. But cool. So I got the front leg on top of the geometry now, and then I'll work when I come back from my run. I'll work on getting more of the body in front. Um, it's just so funny that it's, it's all in the same position. But it just will not let it, no matter what I do, it just does not want to let this other geometry go in front, even though I physically moved it, right? If you can see it here, I, I dragged him in front, hoping that that might alleviate it, but no. Yeah, yeah. That came off nice. So it's the same system I used for the triple, right? Because originally I had the same situation when ported him in. Now the only downside is that some of the, the joints in here or multiple joints on like especially like the the antenna the the stalks rather on the eyes there's like obviously a lot of joints going on in there um, so I'm either gonna have to just let what's there be there or actually take the sprite and try and mimic the same joints and parent the sprite joints not the sprite but the sprite joints to the geometry joints which is gonna be a pain because I gotta make sure they're exactly perfect otherwise it's gonna get all broken but I'll deal with that yeah, I consider that a win, man. Uh, sound effects are in place. They're playing pretty well. Yeah. I think we're in good shape. All right. So, yeah, 10 minutes early. I think I'm going to wrap up here. Because I'm starting to get hungry. And if I don't go for my run now, I'm going to just eat dinner and get fat. So, that'd be bad. But, um, yeah, so there you go, man. The beans have been spilled. You now officially know the truth. This is a video game based on Tribbles. Star Trek Tribbles. Woo so Tribbles and Glommers. That's what we got going here. But, uh, yep. Hopefully get it all polished by a month from now. Uh, looks awesome, and the beans were great. <laughs> Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. I uh, hope you can come back Wednesday. Uh, you and you and, and you <laughs> and all the, the lurkers in the background but uh, thanks man I appreciate you hanging out I appreciate the, the conversation that always makes it more enjoyable but uh, yeah I'm going to pack it in I'm going to go for a run uh, thank you <laughs> thanks man uh, good luck let me know when you're streaming again too let me know when you guys come back online until then uh, you guys take care of yourselves and I'll be back on Wednesday same time, 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. I hope you guys make it back. Uh, yep. Peace out. We'll do. Thanks, man. Everyone, take care. I will see you in a couple days. Adios.